there. Welcome back. I'm Lee Sharon and this is the vegetable jungle at Old Tavern Farm. Right at the moment, Tropical Storm Fred is spinning above us because we needed more rain. We really did. So we're having a tough time. We're still having a lot of water problems. Um, but things are still growing, and so I wanted to give you guys um, a little tour and a little update about what's going on here in the middle of August, August 19th, I think it is. Um, and so I want to invite you in to the vegetable jungle. So over here is the tomatoes. It is this is the Amish paste and all of the tomatoes in this area of the garden are Amish paste and they are really happy. <laughs> so um, hopefully we'll get those and we won't get any fungal problems. And then over here our corn is doing really well. And then in this section right here is these are supposed to be poblano peppers, but the seed company mixed up the seeds and we ended up getting sweet banana peppers instead. But that's okay, it's been a crazy year, so we'll just take what we can get and we'll get poblanos next year. But they're still doing really well. These are beautiful, healthy plants with lots and lots of fruit on them. And there's just beginning to sort of crop in. Okay, more tomatoes. size of this one. Come see this tomato. Look how beautiful that is. That's an Amish paste and it is seriously happy. Isn't it neat how it sort of looks like a big clam almost. It's crazy. Okay, more to more pe uh, peppers. <laughs> Easy for me to say. More tomatoes over there against the wall. Those are uh, mostly cherry pep, cherry tomatoes. Oops. And then over here, we have all of our zucchini, which is also doing really well. It is starting to get a little bit fungusy, but is still cropping pretty well. Let's see if we can find a zucchini to show you. So that's good. Okay. Now when we started the, gar the vegetable garden, I did plant these really beautiful um, marigolds to try to minimize some of the pest and deer problems. And for the most part, it's worked. But not just that, I just think they're so beautiful and I'm super proud of them. So. And over here, some of the brassicas that we have over here, um, I think have also been helped by the marigolds. You can tell we've got a super fantastic cabbage over here. Another one here, which this is probably not enough for a year, but there's also one down here. A couple of them, and they're doing fine. I'll just use these in soups and stews and I'll sell her these. Another marigold plant, which is doing fantastic. Now, we have had some problems with fungus because of this weather. Um, down here at, the, at my feet is what's left of our cucumber crop. It is completely annihilated by fungus. So just this morning, I ended up getting nine pints of garlic dill pickles into my cellar. So that's it for the cu cucumber season, but that's okay because we did get something. And next year I'll put them someplace else. Come over here and look at this. So this is our black-eyed pea patch, and these pods, this is what black-eyed peas look like when they start getting pods. And we've got a nice little crop here. It's not going to be anywhere near a year's worth of beans, but it's okay. It's okay. These bean plants still put nitrogen into the soil, so it's, it's all good. Okay, over here... We have our Greek giganta beans, and they have continued to grow. There's some 
that's just one of the pods right here. I'll show you some other ones, but they're cropping in really beautifully and they're gonna go, they're gonna go quite a while yet into the fall before they're ready to pick, but they've been a total success story. As you can see, we have had some, some uh, blight problems on the tomatoes, uh, but these are the triple L tomatoes that were free. So um, I'm not really gonna stress too much about that. We still have quite a lot of tomatoes coming on. And then, um, and then this is another Greek Giganta, which is really, really doing great. Um, some of the, as you can see, this plant is so huge and it's still, I mean, it is making pods like crazy. It's flowering like crazy. It's got tons of beans on. There are, there are huge bean pods right here. But again, I mean, one of these bean pods is pretty much, <laughs> it's pretty much a meal, <laughs> maybe two of them. So, and over here, they're really starting to, starting to hang, looking good. So, super pleased with my Greek Gigantas. Okay, let's go over to the tomato area in this part of the garden. So, every gardener knows that sometimes things just don't work out no matter how hard you try. So this area of the tomatoes has basically been killed by the weather. And so they've all started to fall down and it's just classic. It's classic blight, it's fungal, it's awful. But we're still gonna get some, we're still gonna get some beautiful tomatoes and so we're gonna be happy with that. Now this is our, our other pepper area and we have King of the North um, bell peppers here. They're starting to crop in really well. And then we have over here, this area has gotten really weedy with this garlic mustard. Over here, there's more King of the North. And, oh, here's a good one. So it looks like the King of the North like to grow upside down almost. So that's interesting. We've never tried King of the North before. So, um, that's nice. So this is our pepper patch. I mean, our pepper patch. <laughs> our pumpkin patch. So um, this is, I think, a Long Island cheese pumpkin. But then we've also got some white winter squash. So if we can manage to get the pumpkins out of the pumpkin patch before the flood happened. It has just been a really tough year and the mosquitoes have been terrible. So. My basil that is being taken over by this horrible garlic mustard that is invasive and horrible. But I still have already had a harvest of basil and I will have more harvest, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I also had a lot of really good luck with my sunflowers this year. I'm super, super happy. This is the mammoth variety right here, and it gives you a little sun and all this rain. <laughs> so it's just beautiful. I'm super happy with my sunflowers. I didn't get any last year or the year before, so I'm super happy to have my sunflowers back. So this right here, this area right here, is what is left of my onion patch. And you can see my red wing onions are still here in the ground, some of them. And I think we're gonna go ahead and pull some of these as you're here with me and take them in to start curing. So that's a beauty. That's a beauty. There's another beauty. And there's a small one, but its top has topped over, so I'm gonna take that out. All right, let's go into the garage where I'm curing all my other alliums, and I'll show you how I do that and what everything looks like right now. So we brought the onions that we pulled from out in the garden into the garage where I have all of the other onions drying and curing. So all I'll do is just pull them obviously out of the ground, just pull the rest of these over. And what I'm trying to do is just lay them flat like this and they'll just dry. As you can see, the rest of these have just dried and the tops when the tops are completely dry like this, 
then they're ready to be stored or strung or braided or hung somehow, however you want to do them. I have another video about how I string my onions, and I'll put the info card at the top of the, of the uh, window. And then over here, here is my, un my garlic harvest that's really starting to look beautiful, and its tops are completely dry. And I'm, I'm using these right now in my pickles and my sauces and things that I'm canning up. Um, so, but I am going to save a couple of these for seeding further on into the, into the fall. So that's the update on the very wet, very rainy vegetable jungle here at Old Tavern Farm. So as always, I want to thank you so much for visiting me. Big hugs. Hug, hug, hug. Go get your onions. Bye-bye.